Hi all. Um, so this is a presentation on um, the perfect tense, how to talk about the past in French. So I will start by playing the video and then I will follow up with a further explanation and then we'll do a quick quiz at the end. So keep watching and if you want to stop it to take notes, um, please pause the video. The perfect tense, how to talk about the past in French. To talk about something you did in the past, you're going to need the perfect tense. The perfect tense is made up of two parts. The first part is often the verb avoir, to have. And the second part is the past participle. For example, j'ai mangé un sandwich. I have eaten a sandwich. Mm. You take the form of avoir you need, je, and add it to the past participle of the verb you need. In this case, the past participle of manger is manger. J'ai mangé. For ER verbs, the past participle ends in I. Other verbs follow different patterns. For lots of verbs ending in IR, like finir, to finish, the past participle ends in I. J'ai fini. I have finished. Prendre, to take. The ending of the past participle is I. Elle a pris le bus. She took the bus. Normally ones to do with movement that work in a different way. Instead of avoir, they take être and the past participle. Je suis allé à la plage. I went to the beach. Il est rentré à la maison. He came home. So that's the perfect tense. J'ai fini. I have finished. So, just to quickly recap them. So, in order to form the past tense, there are two different verbs that you need to use as its main ingredient. So, um, you might have remembered uh, when you looked at the verb to be être, and you may have um, remembered when you looked at the presentation on the verb avoir. These être and avoir are the two verbs that you need to form the past tense, but they're used separately in the past tense sentences. And so, for example, with avoir, you change avoir to j'ai, just like you use when you want to say, I have a brother, I have a sister, j'ai un frère, une soeur. And so for past tense, you would say, j'ai joué au foot hier. So it's uh, talking about what you've done yesterday. Or if you want to talk about tu, tu as mangé un sandwich, and elle a regardé un film. So to spice up your past tense sentences and to add a little bit of flair, I would recommend you stop this video now and presentation and write down these phrases here in French and write down the English beside it so that you know what they mean in English. So we have hier, hier soir, lundi dernier, la semaine dernière, le mois dernier, l'année dernière. And these are important um, to use as time phrases to form the past tense. So um, in terms of using it then, you have got uh, three different verb endings. Um, uh, which you probably would remember learning with me or with your other teachers. So you have verbs that end in ER, like jouer, manger, habiter, regarder. And you've got verbs that end in IR, not many. Uh, the ER verbs are the most popular and most important ones to learn. Uh, nonetheless, the IR verb endings are finir, choisir. So you would use this quite often when you tell me you have finished your work, j'ai fini, madame. Um, again, some verbs, but not many, end in ori, vendre and entendre, um, and they change to you. So ior changes to i, and ior changes to i accent. Um, and then you have, these are the irregular ones. So again, I would recommend you stop the presentation and write these down, uh, write down to here at a minimum. And these are examples. So we have to have, avoir, ouf, to be, être, été, to do, faire, fait, to drink, boire, bu, to take, prendre, pris. Um, the most important ones here are the first 
three. So please do write them down. And so you have examples of Basi Composi, as I said, in my Etre presentation video webinar. Um, Etre is used with the Mrs. Van de Trump verbs, and these are the verbs that um, involve motion. Uh, jouer to play involves motion, but the idea is that you're not going to any destination as such. So we have je suis allé au supermarché. Tu es allé à Nottingham. Il est allé au parc. And these are motion verbs. And if you are female, you add an e. So you say je suis allé. Pronunciation is the same, but you add an extra e. An e here for feminine. And here, obviously, it's masculine. He, he can't make that feminine. You would say elle est, elle est allée. So, for example, these are the feminine. Je suis allé à Nice. Tu es allé en Espagne. And instead of il, you use elle. Um, in terms of the uh, other verbs that are quite um, that you would use would be rester. Now, re rester is, is an odd word because you're not going anywhere, but the idea is that you are staying in a hotel and to stay in a hotel or stay at home, you need to go to the destination to then stay there. So that is an exception. It doesn't follow a normal pattern, but you do conjugate it with je suis resté and sortir, sortir and arriver, arriver. Pronunciation is the same. So let's do a quick quiz. So again, stop the video so you can guess the answers before I say it. So basic composé is used to talk about things you like doing that happened in the past and you do every day. So when do you use the basic composé? Well done, that happened in the past. To form the basic composé, you need a subject like je, an auxiliary verb and a, an infinitive, a modal verb or a past participle. Yeah, it might be a difficult one, so you might have to go back into bite size to find the answer. And for those of you who got it correct, it is correct, it is the past participle. To form regular past participles with your verbs, you remove the er and add. Well done, most of you got this correct. It is the first one, the accent, the accent. At past participle of faire, okay, this is irregular, so it doesn't follow the normal pattern. Is it fait, faire, and fait? Well done, it's fait. So this is something you just need to learn. And then the last one, when a verb takes être to be in the passive composé, the past participle is not needed, agrees with the present, is an infinitive. It might be a tricky one. You might want to look back on bite size. Uh, those of you who've got it correct, well done, agrees with the person. And what that means is you need to add an E if it's a feminine person. If you're talking about more than one person, you need to add the S if it's masculine, plural. And if it's more than one girl, it's ES. Well done. Okay, so hopefully that explains it a little bit more. And um, it might help you to understand the past tense a little bit more. Um, have a lovely day and see you again soon. Bye.